Welcome ladies and gentlemen to Pukaka Raceway Park here in New Zealand, the last race of the International Tour before we start the West Coast Swing back in the United States of America. This is Heat Race 1. Both heat races will be 8 laps long. And then the two main event races are both 23 laps. As a reminder, this heat race is for two races. If you don't advance, you're missing two races this week. So a big name driver who's around the top 20 bubble could lose a ton of points if they don't make it through into the main event. Let's get to your starting lineup. Jonathan Zorlin and Sky Commons are on the front row. Ryan Brommer, your winner from Tula and Bobo Jones are in row two. Cole Deaver, who got his best finish of the season, finishing second. And Hunter Braxton, those guys are in row three. Jesse Turner and Zachary Fitzwater Sr. row four. With Joshua Sakuli and Quinton Moore in row five. As another reminder, the finishing results from the first main event race here at Pukaka. Anyone on the lead lap, the field gets inversed. And we start the lineup like that. 30 cars on the lead lap equals 30th starting first and first starting in 30th. Drivers, start your engines! Everyone is rolling on the grid. Now this track is craziness. Straight up craziness. We have seen what happens at this track in the NRSL series and in the past Neymar series. Things can get crazy really fast. You could be the race leader. You could start from the pole. But if someone dives into you here in this hairpin, this is the danger corner right here. You could get turned. You could get massive damage. And it's going to be hard to catch up. So we'll see what happens here at Pukaka. It's the final track of the international tour. Your winners so far, Brahmer has won at Rio in Tula. Lightning won at Kyalami and Ellison at Yas Marina. It's been a Chevy string of victories. In fact, Chevy has won every race since Trenton. They won from Dega to Pocono. Tringali got his win and it's been all Chevys again ever since. Can Toyota crack into victory lane in one of these two races? Maybe Ford gets back into victory lane. Sorlin looked like he had the car at Tula, but he got into the pit, into the wall coming out of pit road. It, and it just killed his car when Dylan Young slammed into him. Let's see who ends up crashing here. This is usually danger corner number one. Ooh, Deaver makes contact with Commons, and they're wrecking in the back. Turner's around. Out of Flickinger's done. Turner's likely done. Beckett's in the grass, and he loops it. Cage. Cage and Flickinger are destroyed. Turner and Beckett were around as well. Zorlin leads. Brommer's right there on his bumper. Oh, and Quinton Moore and Sakuli get together a little bit there. That was close. So Beckett and Turner are the last two out right now. Cage and Flickinger on pit road. And a little three wide action up here. Jagger blocking the 88 of Eli Bright might not be the smartest move. This is only for 14th place. And we will take a look at all replays at the end of the event. Sorlin still in the lead with Brommer right on his bumper. Now they will not have to make pit stops here in the heats or the main events. So it just comes down to nailing the racetrack every lap. Deavers in third. Starting on the front row is not a huge benefit, but it can prevent the craziness as Brommer just about turned Zorlin. Zorlin trying to block the three car. Battle for the lead here in Heat 1. 
Sorlin and Brommer make contact. And Brommer takes the lead. You don't want to get yourself taken out. There are still two, there are only two drivers guaranteed to be missing this Flickinger and Cage. You do not want to wreck from the lead. And now zorlin has got a bumper full of Cold Deaver. And they're spread out everywhere here at the top 10. Flickinger came in 25th in points. This is really going to hurt him missing two races. And the leaders are catching St. Beckett. The top seven are all tightly knit up. And here comes Rich, Sekuli, and more. The battle for the Heat 1 win is probably the biggest battle we've seen in a long time. And Zorlin gets to the right side of Brommer. Out of whatever turn that was. And Quinton Moore goes into the tires. One of our underdog drivers who was very fast at Rio. Into the wall. And that will take him out of the main event. Zorlin to the right side of Brommer for the lead. Zorlin will take the position as they're closing in on Sane Beckett, who's now the first man out. Turner had gotten by Tremblay and Magora, so that will save Tremblay. And a battle for second place between Deaver and Brommer. Ooh, contact is made. Deaver will take second place. Ooh, Johnson with some contact back there with Casey Nanako. Be careful, guys. You're in it right now. And Zorlin will get to the bumper of Beckett with nowhere to go. This is going to help Deaver maybe a little bit. Zorlin's not going to get the best exit off the hairpin. But he gets by Beckett nonetheless. As you can see, he's only about two seconds off pace. But Zorlin's looking for, I think, what would be his sixth heat win? Would it be his sixth heat win? Or would it be his seventh? Let's see. He would be going back to back. That's for one. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. He's looking for heat win number seven. I didn't count the sixth one out loud. But he's looking for heat win number seven. Deaver's looking for his first heat win. Brommer and others giving chase. Bobo Jones, Guy Commons up here in the mix. Oh, how will Braxton do with getting blocked in by Beckett? Try shoving him out of the way. No luck. We'll be coming to two to go. Can Zorlin hold on for his seventh heat win of the season? It would tie Hunter Braxton. This would also be the first time Zorlin has gone back to back. Ooh, Sekuli almost lost it there on the straightaway. We saw him wiggling in the back. There's Quinton Moore officially retiring from the race. And it looks like Nanako and Eli Bright might have had a problem as Beckett gets turned into the grass by Andrew Rich. He wanted him out of the way. And he wasn't going to wait. And Nanako and Bright are indeed toast. And we'll have to wait and see. One of those two drivers is going to be done. It's going to be either Nanako or Bright missing Pukaka. We'll see where Bright gets scored. Beckett is going to make this race as long as he can finish and not get turned. Eli Bright just came out of pit road. The 88 is safe, and he came out in front of Beckett. This is 20th place right here. Ooh, Brommer in the grass a little bit there. Bright's got the position on Beckett. That's 420th place. Slade Jagger has had a complication, but he has hit the start-finish line. Or actually, never mind. The Naka will officially be the last man out. So Beckett and Bright are good to go. 
Oh, and someone just got turned there. That was Bobo Jones and Braxton get together there in the wall, but it doesn't matter. Deaver will finish runner-up again, this time in a heat race, as Jonathan Zorlin will win his seventh heat race of the season, tying Hunter Braxton. So Casey Nanako, who came in 18th in the point standings, only a total of 15 points ahead of Joshua Sekuli, is one of the big names that will be hit here. He's going to miss two races. And that is really going to hurt him. So we have a couple of things to look at. We saw what happened to Quinton Moore um, at the very back of the screen when it happened. But we have to see what happened to the 40, the 6, and the 12. So let's get to that right now. All right, here we go. We're going to start with the incident with Adam Flickinger. And we're going to see what exactly transpired here. Oh, and then a lot of guys just getting tight through the corner. And oh, there's Jesse Turner right there. Turner gets really tight and loose and gets in the grass and clips into Sekouli. And boom, he's got nowhere to go. And Adam's going to go straight into the tires. And then Beckett and Cage here. Oh, wow. What happened here? Ooh, Cage gets tight and makes it three wide bounces off of ice and gets into Beckett ice somehow survives this and then you see they spin into the grass and Beckett is going to be saved because Cage hits the tires first and Beckett ultimately uses him as a cushion and believe it or not slamming off of another car versus the tires keeps you alive and that's Ultimately, what got Becca into the race. Now, let's see what happened to Eli Bright and Casey Nanako. I'm just going to leave this in the video unedited. So, ooh, is this it right here? Ooh, so Johnson gives Nanako a shove, and then right here, oh, he really nails the wall. And Eli Bright just has nowhere to go and gets pounded in the back end by Jagger. But Bright wasn't teleported to pit road, but Nanako came in with a smoking engine. And Nanako was the last man out. So that is all for heat number one. I will see you guys for heat two. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're getting ready for heat two, and the clouds have moved in, and the lap times have picked up. Pole position for heat two, Aja Baranowskis ran a 50.9. And let me tell you what. <laughs> I am concerned. These drivers picked up almost three entire seconds all the way around. And it's going to be an interesting heat, too. Dylan Young starts second. Samet Oskin and Nico Tringali in row two. Dale Lightning, Johnny Gardner, row three. Edwin Mendez and Seth Cole are in row number four. While James Ellison and Alan Cavanero will start in row five. A couple of big names. or Well, let's just go over all of them. The drivers from heat one that will miss the doubleheader at Pukaka here today. 18th in points, Casey Nanako. 24th in points, Quinton Moore. 25th in points, Adam Flickinger. And 41st in points, Donovan Cage. Those are the four drivers from Heat 1. Now, Jonathan Zorlin tied Braxton for seven Heat wins on the season he held off well he passed back a charging Ryan Brommer who then fell to third after Cole Deaver went by him so Deaver 
These first two races following upgrade, Stever has been on it. He got second at Tula. He finishes second in his heat race at Pukaka. We'll see where he qualifies for main event number one. And then if all luck is good and Deaver finishes, he will start uh, wherever on the inverse for the second race. Now, the reminder, if you finish a lap down, if there are a bunch of cars a lap down from race one, those drivers say, say you've got lap down cars 31st to 34th, those drivers we qualify and start in that position range in the second main event. And then the DNFs 35th to 40th, they do the same thing and they start in that range at random everyone else on the lead lap gets to inverse so it's going to be interesting for sure and i think main event number two will see a lot more of drivers getting wrecked out than we see in race one that's just that's just a a theory the green flags out here for heat number two and we'll have to see does anyone get wrecked out here? Baran Oscus is good. And it looks like everyone made it through. Wow, yeah, indeed. Everyone makes it through here. So the drivers do a lot better. We never saw the top speed in Heat 1, but here in cloudy conditions, it's about 170. And they're mostly single file. That means bumping is going to come into play here. And you see Baran Oscar's got a nudge from uh, Oskin and Mendes has a ton of front end damage. Gardner's involved in something. Colt Hudson, Matthew Logan, Rowe, Bishop, Nereza, King. All with damage. But Baran Oscar's will lead lap number one and it's a five car breakaway. Baran Oscar's, Oskin, Young, Lightning, and Tringali. Sixth place, Seth Cole. And then, man... Rest of the top 10, Voiles, Anderson, Riggs, and Fernandez. How about that? And we've got retirees. Four retirees on the on the board. And we'll have to wait and see if anyone else joins. No, so the four drivers, we already know who's missing the race. Colt Hudson. R.J. Bishop, Matthew Logan, and James Ellison Cavi will retire, but he will finish in 20th. So Matthew Logan, who came in as the points leader over Rich and Lightning, will not run either of the races. In fact, Logan is the first driver to hit 10 top fives on the season. That happened at Tula. And now he will miss two races in a row. Ellison had made every start up to this point. He is 12th in the standings with two wins. So he will fall a good amount. I, I don't know if he'll fall outside the top 20. RJ Bishop comes in four points over Sekuli. So the, the standings are definitely going to change as contact is made. Baran Oscus into the wall after contact from Samet Oskin. And she's going to pit road. And the lead has been given to Dylan Young. Bishop will fall outside of the top 20 most definitely. And he will be the first driver who's won a race to be in that position. Now he will still make the playoffs as long as he stays in the top 30. But it's going to change the last points position from 20th to 19th. Baran Oscus retires from her damage. She's had enough. She's just going to requalify for the main event. Jackson King is probably happy he stayed on track with his heavy damage. Or he would have probably retired. But only four cars remain here. So we're coming to the end of lap four. Now Dale Lightning has five heat wins he could be looking for heat win number six dylan young would be looking for a heat win number four and oskin's looking for his third heat win of the season as lightning peeks out to make a move on dylan young it's a top five breakaway and Wyatt anderson is the car in sixth place look at the rest of this top ten anderson fernandez riggs 
Watson and Chris Wheeler. That could be our top 10 at the start of main event number two tomorrow. This is actually a two day affair here at Pukaka to give the drivers some time to rest because it is a very crazy racetrack. And look at this tight racing here at the front. Young Lightning, Austin, ooh, it's gonna get close. And Young gets turned into the wall by the five of Lightning. He'll fall back side by side almost. Nope, he holds on to third over Tringali for now. But Lightning turns Dylan Young out of the way for the heat race lead. And Young is probably fuming right now. Lucas Catano into the top 10. You see that pack, Nerezza's in there in 12th. Nerezza's the only top performance car who's outside the top 10 without a reasonable amount of damage. And <laughs> he's just got all these slow cars in front of him or under underfunded cars in front of him, I should say. Lightning continues the lead. We'll head to the back. There you see Seth Cole has back and damage himself. Breakaway from 8th to ninth, And there's Nereza. He's just like, dude, these guys are in front of me right now. Fastest lap on the race does go to the 5 of 51.589. You see there is a little bit of tire wear. Even on 1X, we, they made sure that tires were going to wear here. Now it's down to Lightning and Oskin. Lightning's looking for heat win number six on the season. They'll be coming to the white flag. Young and Tringali aren't closing in the gap whatsoever. And no one else has retired ever since the field spread out. This will likely be the card count we have left in the main events tomorrow. And we have seen huge wrecks on the front stretch before. And if someone who's slower gets turned at the front of the field really hard and fast, there could be a huge pileup. Dylan Young probably def definitely frustrated. Look at all that right side damage on the two machine. But it's down to Lightning and Austin. Is there a slow car up ahead? Johnny Gardner was up there. I don't know if he went off track, but Lightning did a little wiggle. Or maybe he was just blocking a potential dive bomb from Austin. Nonetheless, winning heat number two. As they come through the final two corners. To the checkered flag, getting his sixth heat win of the season is Dale Lightning. In the five machine. He's come a long way this season so lightning is arguably now the king of heat too and see even though they retired Baran Oscars foils and Cavagnero will make the event and we will take a look at all those incidents just to cover all the bases i don't even know what happened to voils we saw what happened to baran oscus so we don't need to look at that but voils on down we definitely need to look at i believe cavi and all those guys down there were all around the same incident just look at that top 10 man outside the top five fernandez riggs anderson katano and wheeler that was the top 10 for this heat race so things could get crazy in the main events tomorrow but first, let's take a look at the replay here in heat number two. Alrighty, here we go, guys. We're going to slow this down to 1-4 speed. It all starts at the front of the field here. It actually starts farther up ahead with Gardner. So you see, they were all strung out. And right there where Gardner is, he slams the brakes, gets into Tringali. Mendez pounds into him, and here it's on Cole, Ellison, Logan, Nereza. They just pile it in. Bishop into Hudson, King into him, Baker, Katano. It's just a huge stack up. And that is what caused everything to happen. This is why drivers retired. Um, now let's see if we can figure out what happened to Voiles. There's the 24 machine. He was the first of the cars to make it through. Okay, and it seems to have happened here on lap two. 
Oh, and he just he just loses it. And he already had damage, and boom, race ender, but at least he's making the main event, right? So with that, guys, I will see you tomorrow for our doubleheader here from Hukuka, New Zealand.